Hello everyone! We love single stage to orbit space planes on this channel, and I was thinking about what kinds of SSTOs had never been built on here. And I realized that this game has some fully fleshed out rocket engines that run off of monopropellant instead of liquid fuel and oxidizer. So I started thinking of a plan to use the Puff monopropellant engine to make a single stage plane that could hopefully make it to a moon and back. And then I looked at the stats on the Puff engine, and they are absolutely awful. The Puff engine has a specific impulse of only 120 seconds at sea level, and just a little bit of inquiry revealed that I was not going to be able to take off from the runway and hit orbit. However, if you've seen my most recent video, you'll know that in that video I used a technique of taking off from the mountaintops west of the Kerbal Space Center rather than the runway itself. The five and a half kilometer altitude of these mountain tops will get the puff engine from the abysmal 120 second specific impulse to a still remarkably bad 190 seconds. To get to the mission start point, I've put together a straightforward cargo space plane. Unlike a lot of things on my channel, this is a fairly normal plane and accordingly flies quite well. As the sole purpose of this plane is to land things on the mountain top, the landing gear is almost indestructible. In testing, I discovered that the first thing to break during a hard touchdown is actually the Goliath engines falling off the side. Our monopropellant plane weighs in at 16 tons, most of which is 13 tons of highly clipped monopropellant tanks, and it's powered by four puff engines. After releasing the monopropellant SSTO, I'm going to bring the cargo plane back home to the Kerbal Space Center before starting the mission in earnest. As is the custom on this channel, no landing will go missed as an opportunity to perform some piloting challenges. So we're going to overcome the size of this plane and land it on the top of the vehicle assembly building. Bill came in for the final approach of the vehicle assembly building, but his speed was too high, so we turned it into a aileron roll instead of a landing. I came around for a second landing, but was still going too fast, so we'll have to do it on the third try. To get the final nose down rotation of the plane, I bounce the rear landing gear off of the side of the VAB and land right on top of the helipad. Now that the cargo space plane is landed, the prelude to the mission is complete, and we're going to head back over the, to the mountaintop and get ready to take off the monoprop SSTO. On the ground, we're going to pick up as much speed as possible, and after leaving the ground, we're immediately going to fall into a steep descent. We need this descent to pick up enough speed to generate enough lift to fly horizontally. By the time we've reached this point, our altitude has fallen to 3 kilometers, and the specific impulse in the puff engines has fallen from 190 to 160 seconds. It was very tempting to start climbing right away and reach a higher altitude and have a higher specific impulse from the engine, but picking up speed flying horizontal is really efficient and it outweighs even that gain in specific impulse. The wings have a built-in angle of attack on them, which means that as we pick up speed, that natural angle of attack will start generating the lift, even if we have the nose of the fairing pointed directly prograde. This reduces the body drag from the fairing, and once we reach a high enough speed, we'll be able to face directly prograde and still have enough lift to climb with. We are now starting to climb quickly, which means that the specific impulse of the engines is climbing quickly. And as a result, the delta V remaining is going up even as our fuel levels are going down. The tuning of the wing angle was based around being able to do this middle part of the ascent facing directly prograde and be able to still get the appropriate amount of lift from the wings. As we get to the thinner bands of the atmosphere, the lift from the wings is decreasing, and our vertical speed is decreasing even as our horizontal speed is increasing. But we're close enough to reaching a suborbital trajectory here that we'll still be able to get our apoapsis into space before we start descending. This fits into a heuristic in Kerbal Space Program that no matter if you're doing ascents or descents, 
flatter is better. It might be tempting to try to get the climbing done right away, but generally the lower you can get the profile of any of your maneuvers, the better it's going to be. Due to our typically flat ascent profile, we now have a typically small circularization burn to get into a full orbit after reaching space. After reaching a full orbit, we have 163 meters per second of delta V remaining. This is a lot, but it's a long way from being able to reach any of the moons. So if a monopropellant SSTO is to be able to reach a moon without refueling, it's going to take some kind of new technique that I'm not aware of. With nowhere else to go, we're just going to go ahead and deorbit this thing. I decided to go with a small injection burn and let it deorbit itself slowly over multiple orbits of carbon. The aerodynamic trickery in the design, along with the angle on the wings, meant that this glided very well through the deorbit phase. And I just let it deorbit itself, checking in on it every once in a while. The excellent gliding dynamics on this meant that it was approaching the Kerbal Space Center on the final orbit quite quickly, which was a perfect opportunity to do a low pass of the mountains and scrub off some speed. At the beginning of this mission, the cargo plane that carried this that was quite a bit bigger was able to land on the top of the VAB. And I plan on landing this on top of the VAB as well. I figured that due to the size of this, this VAB landing wouldn't pose that much of a challenge. However, once I reached low speeds, I discovered that this craft had some serious stability issues that I hadn't really been aware of. Specifically, the lack of a rudder on this meant that any roll inputs would lead to an oscillation in the yaw axis. And without a rudder, I simply had to wait for this to slowly dampen itself. With all that said, Bill relaxed and prepared for another routine landing at the Kerbal Space Center. An absolutely exemplar landing, 10 out of 10, I can't find a single thing wrong with this. And that brings to a finish the mission of the monopropellant propelled single stage to orbit space plane. I hope you guys enjoyed watching, and I'll see you next time.